Hello and good evening, everyone. So let us start. So uh, rightly said that this is a very basic topic about classification of bone tumors. And this question is also asked in exams many a times. And we must know how do we classify, what are the different types of classification. Sometimes it is a broad classification that is commonly asked. They may ask you just uh, what are different types of bone tumor classification. Or they may ask you what is the classification for osteosarcoma. How do you classify giant cell tumors? So the question may be asked in different ways. So I've tried to cover this broad topic into one talk today. And uh, importantly, uh, we must also know why, why do we need to classify these bone tumors? So, you know, normally the tumors, uh, they are classified in four ways. So this is a very common, uh, a general method. And this is what we follow in oncology, not specific for uh, bone tumors. So normally we classify them like from where they're starting their tissue, the organ, the system, uh, then uh, like whether it is a bone tumor or it is a breast cancer. So depending upon the site and tissues, whether it is primary or metastatic like that. The second is specific type, which means uh, specific to any particular organ, like somebody may ask you, uh, uh, classification of uh, benign bone tumors or classification of osteosarcoma. Then there is a WHO classification that we commonly follow that may mostly takes into account uh, the biological behavior, how uh, the behavior is like benign versus malignant and intermediate type. We'll go one by one into details, don't worry. I'm just giving you a broad overview what we are going to talk today. And then the most uh, common one that we commonly read in our books is the uh, TNM classification, uh, the tumor node metastasis, which is uh, given by the AJCC, American Joint Committee on, on Cancer. So why this classification is important? That is an uh, important question. So you know, when we diagnose a tumor, so one of the very important part is the treatment has changed a lot nowadays. When we have to explain to the patient what we are going to do, we need to have some sort of idea about from where it is originating, what is the site, uh, what subtype it is, like not all bone cancers are same. You know, this uh, osteosarcoma, even in osteosarcoma, let's talk about specific osteosarcoma. In osteosarcoma, you have low grade type, par osteal osteosarcoma, where we just need to operate, where we have a high grade type of osteosarcoma in which telangiectric type or chondroblastic type osteosarcomas, where we need to give chemotherapy and then plan for surgery. So even in a single uh, type of uh, histological type of cancer, we have different modalities of treatment. So a lot of things have changed and that's why we need to classify them properly so that we plan its management. Also, we explain to the patient the prognosis. So for a low-grade cancer, I can say that, yes, it is going to have a good prognosis. The chances of a spread to any other part of the body is less. Second, once we start the treatment, sometimes if the tumor size is, say, 8 centimeter, and then after giving chemotherapy or surgery or radiation therapy, we can see the shrinkage of the size. So we can assess the treatment response as well. So how the tumor is responding. And uh, many a times when we uh, have to divide the patients, we need to have trials. So we need all these classifications that helps in uh, planning all these treatment aspects with prognosis, they assess the response, compare outcomes, and plan clinical trials in these cases. So the classification is very, very important part of our subject. And we should, before we start on the treatment, we must classify the tumor type. So the two classifications that are quite common is the WHO and the UICC, the Union for International Cancer Control. And broadly, these are based on the histological subtype the site from which the tumors originate, the grading of the tumor is taken into account, and the spread of the, the staging, the spread of the cancer throughout the body, which means the stage. 
So you can see that there are different parts. This is the spread of cancer is what is called stage. Grade is something what you see under microscopy. This is what you see on the pathological specimen. So this is called morphological grade site from where it is originating and the histological subtypes. So that is one way. One of the most important and the common way of classification is based on the tissue of lineage from where it is originating. Like this is the most common ones that you have read. We all have read the bone forming tumors where there is osteoid formation. So you can see that these are uh, classified broadly into benign ones and malignant ones. While the same type of tissue lineage like osteoid in benign tumors, it can be seen in osteoid osteoma or osteoblastoma and its cancerous counterpart come, becomes sarcoma. So any word where there is sarcoma is usually this means it's a malignant tumor of connective tissue. Similarly, for cartilage forming tumors, we have the benign ones like chondroma, osteochondroma, chondroblastoma, chondromyxoid fibroma, etc., etc. And the malignant counterpart is chondrosarcoma. Similarly, we may have for different ones like vascular hemangioma, hemangiosarcoma. Uh, for fatty tissue, it's lipoma versus liposarcoma. So this classification this is one way on which we decide based on the tissue lineage. Now, based on the site of origin, so this is also very important for all the practical aspect. And I'm talking about the bone tumors. So the primary tumor which arises primarily from the bone. The other ones are metastatic. Metastatic, which means which originate from different structure, different organ, and then it metastasizes to bone. Among the primary and secondary, those which start, the primary ones are those which start in the bone. What do we mean by secondary? Secondary means where there is development of cancerous lesion in a pre-existing bone lesion, which may be a benign. Like in fibrous dysplasia, there may be chances of malignant transformation. In enchondroma, there may be chances of development into chondrosarcoma, which means secondary. So there is a pre-existing lesion which has transformed because of some stimulus into a malignancy. The another very common type of secondary involvement is because of radiation-induced sarcoma. So these are common uh, types. Most commonly what we see are the soft tissue sarcomas or osteosarcomas that develop in radiation-induced field. That's why sometimes when you have to choose the type of treatment and radiation, we have to be very cautious and very careful when we choose, when once it is absolutely necessity and we weigh the benefit of therapy one over the other, then only we choose a particular form of therapy. So, so this is one way of classification.